Hey guys, so we're back. Today we're doing my part two review of Serpent and Dove. <laughs> so if you guys haven't seen my part one review yet, go and watch it because part two of this book is insane. And we're going to discuss the entirety of the rest of the book because I just finished it and there are things that we need to discuss about this book so if you guys don't want to be spoiled go and read the book if you want to you don't have to if you want to read it go read it um if we're being honest in my opinion it's not really worth it if you want to read it but if you want to read it go read it if you guys want to stay here and be spoiled for the first half of this book go right ahead i'm going to be delving into part two and three spoilers because this book is divided into three sections. So last time I talked about part one, today we're going to be talking about part two and part three, which is the rest of the book. So if you guys don't want to be spoiled, I recommend leaving now. If you guys want to stay, you can stay, but we're going to delve into part two and three, AKA the entirety of the rest of the book. We're going to jump into the rest of the book now. So if you guys don't want to be spoiled, leave now, bye. So anyway, uh, you know, we all know how part one of this book ended. Part one of Serpent and Dove ended with Reed and Lou and the Archbishop telling them that since they're married, they have to uh, basically have sex to make the marriage official, basically. But here's the thing. They don't want to do that. They don't want to do that at all they would rather kill each other than have sex with the other person they don't want to have sex with you know their enemy because reed's the witch hunter or the chasaur and lou is a thief but 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 since they don't know she's a witch she claims that she's a thief so they so enemies can't so enemies don't so the enemies they don't want to have sex with each other obviously but um the archbishop is forcing them to because I don't know, I don't know. He basically is lying about the whole situation of them getting married, but he can't lie about them having sex. So, I don't know, it's kind of weird, but um, they're put into this room. It's awkward. Um, they don't want to have sex. And Lou, she's like, get away from me, Reed. I don't like you that way. Get away, go away now. And Reed's like, well, it's not like I want to have sex with you. And you know what she says? She goes, I have a plan. She takes out a knife and she slits her arm open and she lets it bleed all over the like bed sheets that they're using. And I'm gonna read you the section of where this happens. So bear with me. <laughs> she says, you can stop right there. I said, no, no more clothes coming off. His jaw tightened. I'm not going to force myself on you. His nose wrinkled in disgust. Louise. <laughs> it's a Lou. He twitched visibly at the name. Is my name offensive to you? Everything about you is offensive to me. He pulled the chair from the desk and sat down, heaving a great sigh. You're a criminal. There's no need to sound so self-righteous, Chess. You're here because of you, not me, he scowled. This is your fault. I didn't know you were going to, that you were going to frame me. I'm a criminal, I reasoned, not bothering to correct him. It didn't matter now, anyway. I behaved criminally. You should have known better. He gestured angrily to my bruised face and broken fingers. And how has behaving criminally treated you? I'm alive, aren't I? Are you? He arched a copper brow. You look like someone nearly killed you. I waved a careless hand and smirked. Hazard of the job. Not anymore. We have to consummate the marriage. His voice was low, raw, angry. Neither of us can afford an annulment. I pushed away from him roughly, jerking up my sleeve to reveal the skin of my inner arm. Eyes never leaving his, I dug the tip of the knife in and sliced down. He moved to stop me, but it was too late. Blood welled. I ripped the blanket from his bed and let the blood drip on his bed sheets. There, I stalked to the bathroom chamber, ignoring his shocked expression. Marriage consummated. So that's basically the scene of where Lou takes out the knife, she slits her arm, and the blood spills all over the bed sheets so that when the visitor comes in to check to see if they've actually had sex, uh, 
it'll like show that they've had sex without actually having sex. So yeah, so that was Lou's like badass way of showing how much of a badass she can be. So uh, yeah, and then to, and then throughout the rest of the book, nothing really happens. Lou's friend Coco is supposedly with her aunt at a at her other coven which is on a completely different island but it turns out that coco is in the chasaur tower with lou and reed which is where like all the chasaurs like live basically uh there's like this upstairs area where basically where basically like only the priests and the healers and the nurses are allowed and lou really wants to go upstairs but Reed is telling her to stay put, don't go anywhere. When I'm at my meetings, you do as I say, you stay in our chambers, you stay in the room, you don't go anywhere. So you know what he does? Reed, uh, he hires a guard, a bodyguard, another Chaucer to look after Lou. Now this guard's name is a 16 year old boy. His name is Ansel and he is forced to watch Lou and make sure she doesn't do anything crass or unladylike because uh, her husband, Reed, isn't there to watch her. So he's like, you know what? I'll just get a Chaucer on training to watch her. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. And Lou, uh, they're having this conversation right before Ansel comes in, in the book. And in the book, they have this conversation, like I just said, they, they have a conversation where they're talking about how the day is gonna go with Ansel. Reed's gonna basically go to a meeting or something and Lou has to stay behind and Ansel's gonna come up and watch her. Lou is talking to Reed, saying how she's going to seduce Ansel into making him fall in love with her or something? I have no idea. Right, right, I waved a hand. Do continue. His name is Ansel. He's 16. Ooh, I waggled my brows, grinning. A bit young, isn't he? He's perfectly capable. I like them young, though. I ignored his flushing face and tapped my lip thoughtfully. Easier to train that way. And he shows great promise as a potential. Perhaps I'll give him his first kiss, I mused. No, I'll do him one better. I'll give him his first fuck. What? Are, are, is she, so basically, Lou is suggesting that she will seduce Ansel, who is 16, Lou's 18, so she would basically have sex with Ansel, who is two years younger than her, a grown adult, uh, Lou is 18, so that's basically like an adult age, a grown adult would have sex with a 16 year old boy, so that she can seduce him basically, like, what? So, Ansel basically becomes Lou's chaperone, bodyguard, kind of. He walks her around the castle because Lou seduced him in a different way with a song. And you know what? This song is very unholy of Lou to sing. Because, as we all know, with the Chaucer's, Reed is devoted to God and everything, so he doesn't curse or anything, but Lou is different. Lou can curse. It doesn't really matter. So anyway, Lou and, um, what's his name? Ansel? Ansel. Ansel becomes Lou's bodyguard, and he has to keep Lou in the chambers, in her and Reed's chambers, because Reed doesn't allow Ansel to take her anywhere. It's just basically like he has to keep Lou in a room, just him and her without them talking. And but she she wants she wants to go outside and explore Chasor Tower. And she gets him to take her outside. And the way that she was able to take him outside and convince him to take her on a tour of like Chasor Tower was by singing a song. And this song is called Big Titty Liddy. To Ansel's annoyance, I began to hum. No humming either, I ignored him. Big Titty Liddy was not very pretty, but her bosom was big as a barn, I sang. Her creamery knockers drove men off their rockers, but she was blind to their charms. Stop! His face burned so vivid, a scarlet it rivaled my husband's. What are you doing? That, that's indecent. Of course it is, it's a pub song. You've been in a pub, he asked, flabbergasted. But you're a woman, 
It took every drop of my willpower not to roll my eyes. Whoever had taught these men about women had been heinously out of touch with reality. It was almost as if they never met a woman, a real woman, not a ludicrous pipe dream like Seely. I had a duty to this poor boy. There are lots of women in pubs, Ansel. We aren't like you. Think. We can do anything you can do. And probably better. There's a whole world outside this church, you know. I could show you if you wanted. His expression hardened. Thro though pink bloomed in his cheeks. No. No more talking. No more humming. No more singing. Just, just stop being you for a little while, eh? I can't make any promises, I said seriously. But if you give me a tour, not happening. Fine. Big Willy Billy talks sort of silly, I bellowed. But his knob was long as his stop, stop. Ansel waved his hands, cheeks flaming anew. I'll take you on a tour. Just please, please stop singing about that. I rose to my feet, clasping my hands together and beaming. Voila. So that's basically how Lou convinces Ansel to go outside, basically. By singing a song, a very, very, very inappropriate song. So, that was fun. But, um, throughout the rest of the book, um, we find Coco in, like, that upstairs area, and she's pretending to be a healer. So she never really left Lou for her aunt's coven, like, across on that different island. She is in the tower with Lou and Ansel and Reed, pretending to be a healer. And... Yeah, that's basically, that's basically it for her. But, um, we get, like, this side story. I, I, I don't know why I'm saying side story. Side story about Lou and Reed getting kind of closer to possibly falling in love. Who knows? But we get this scene where Reed gives Lou a book that Reed really, 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 really likes. It's, like, his favorite book, basically. And... Uh, he wants her to read it because it's his favorite, so that maybe they can bond over, over, like, Reed's favorite book or something. I have no idea. But, um, this was very, um, this was very obvious. It, it was a very obvious scene. Because this is, like, an enemies to lovers story. Like, this entire book is a book about enemies to lovers. And Reed's favorite book is a book about enemies to lovers. So, yeah. Oh, I nodded, biting that, biting the inside of my cheek to keep from smiling. It's tastefully done. The characters are from warring kingdoms, but they're forced to work together when they uncover a plot to destroy the world. They loathe each other initially, but in time, they are willing to set aside their differences. So, that's basically how their relationship starts out. They hate each other, but as they bond over this book, they start to like each other. And you know what? It kind of works. Uh, throughout the book. Even though the book's like 500 pages, it does work out in the end, even though at this point when he gives her the book, we're at like 200 pages into the book already, so not really that much depth happening uh, in their relationship. But in the, in the book, Shelby Mahurin, who's, who's the author, if you wanted to know, um, Shelby Mahurin, the author right there, her, um, her author photo or her, or her headshot or something, that's her. That's the author. And with this book, there's a lot of weird things that happen in this book. Like, as Reed and uh, Lou, Lou, as Reed and Lou get closer, they go out on this, like, day of fun, on this date and everything, and they go to this bakery and they sit down and they have food. And... Uh, they, they don't really, like, know each other that well. Like, they don't really, like, know each other's interests. So, uh, they get to know each other's interests by basically playing 20 questions, kind of. So let's read that scene. Let's make a game of it, shall we? A game of questions to get to know each other. I leaned forward to returning the challenge. Let's. Fine. What's your favorite color? Blue. She rolled her eyes. Boring. Mine's gold. Or turquoise. Or emerald. Why doesn't that surprise me? Because you aren't as stupid as you look. I didn't know whether to be insulted or flattered. She didn't give me time to decide. What's the most embarrassing thing you've ever done? I blood crept up my throat at the memory. 
I coughed and stared at her empty plate. The Archbishop once caught me in a uh, er, compromising position with a girl. Oh my god, she smacked her palms against the table, eyes widening. You got caught having sex with Seely? <laughs> Shh, of course not. She kissed me, okay? It was just kissing, Lou frowned. Just kissing. That's no fun at all. Hardly something to be embarrassed about. <laughs> she snorted. You wish. No, I sang at a festival when I was a child. Missed every note. Everyone laughed. I was a shit singer. Our neighbors tasked, tisked in disapproval. I grimaced. Yes, I know. Right. Biggest pet peeve? Swearing. Killjoy, she grinned. Favorite food? Venison. She points to her empty plate. Sticky buns. Best friend? Jean-Luc. You? Really? Her face? Her grin faded, and she stared at me with what looked like, like pity. But that couldn't be right. That's unfortunate. Mine is Brie. Ignoring the jab, the look. I interrupted before she could ask another question. Fatal flaw? Selfishness. Wrath. Greatest fear? Death. Was that really necessary? <laughs> Was that really necessary that they, that they, like, get to know each other by playing 20 questions? I don't think that was necessary at all. They did not have to, if they have an actual conversation and they ask like, like literal stuff about each other instead of playing 20 questions, maybe this would have been developed into a stronger and better relationship and book because the book, I rated three stars. But uh, we'll get to my rating in a little bit. But uh, yeah, overall, overall, I rated the book three stars because I just thought it was average. The writing was kind of ugh. The characters were kind of ugh. I don't know. I just didn't really like love it as much as everyone else did. But you know what? We're going to continue on with some passages from the book. So as we continue on through the book after their date and everything, they celebrate Christmas and everything. And it's super fun and everything. And they just like bond even more. And they just start to, you know, bond and have fun and everything. But Reed is not having it. Reed is very hateful toward the witches. He despises the witches, like, in a way where it could be kind of funny, but it's kind of dehumanizing to women if you really think about it. Because as I was reading this book, as I was reading this book, like, 330 pages in out of, like, 500 pages, I was like, wait, it just hit me. All of the men who are the witch killers, they're all men. And then all of the women are witches. My mind was blown when I realized that. But anyway, uh, they talk a lot more. Like when they have like their first real conversation um, after that date, uh, they just talk. And Reed does not like the witches. So Reed doesn't call the witches she. Uh, he calls them it and they have this conversation where Lou defends herself and the witches by saying it's she not it so I'm gonna read you that passage cuz it's a mess witches can give birth read she flicked my nose I blinked lips quirking up in surprise that makes them female all right but they only give birth to females. Grinning, I thrust my face toward hers in response. She jerked back and nearly toppled off the bed. I arched a brow in wry amusement. Sounds like asexual reproduction to me. What are you talking about? I'm not even gonna get into that. I'm not even gonna get into that conversation that they had because it was confusing. It wasn't confusing. It was just so poorly done. You know what I mean? It was just like very poorly done. But anyway, um, throughout the rest of the book, uh, they grow closer. They eventually bond over mutual things. And they actually do end up having sex and consummating their relationship like they were supposed to do after they had gotten married. But they decided to wait like another 240 pages before they actually did it. And, uh, it was okay. Um, they actually, for, for like those, after they have sex, they, they, they're in love with each other now. And, uh, but, but, 
20 pages after they do it, Reed finds something out that is really, really devastating to him. He finds out that Lou is a witch, and the way that this was all unveiled was that a gang of witches who are like Lou's witch coven family, because all of the witches consist of women. There are no male witches, because basically if you have, if a female witch produces a male baby, or like a male witch, they're given up for adoption basically. And the magic that witches have pass through the sun, so they don't get magic. So I thought that was kind of interesting, but anyway, back to the, um, back to the thing with, uh, the Gang of Witches. The Gang of Witches come into the city one day, and they put on this show, and they talk about how Lou was born, and basically how Lou's mother is, like, the leader of the witches, and Lou is meant to be a big sacrifice. She's supposed to be killed so that all of the witches can take over Belterra, basically. So if Lou dies, then her mother can take over Belterra, which is the kingdom that they live in. So, yeah. But it also turns out that the Archbishop, the Archbishop, had an affair with Morgan LeBlanc, who is the leader of the witches, who was Lou's mother, is act the Archbishop is Lou's father. My mind was blown. But anyway, uh, even though my mind was blown at that scene, the scene got worse. The scene got worse. Because after this happens, like all the chasseurs are like in the city square. A a witch comes and attacks Lou. Uh, Reed finds out that Lou's a witch. He says, you're not my wife, you're not my wife. Lou, Lou, Lou runs off in like despair and she passes out her mother. She wakes up and her mother is just comforting her and they left the city basically. Lou, her mom, and the witch coven, and the gang of witches, they all left the city. They went to go back to their coven so that Lou can die. And when Lou dies, Lou has three more days to live. And Reed is acting all angsty, and Ansel is with him, and a giant revelation happens with Reed. So let's read that now. All she's ever done is lie to me, Ansel. She looked me in the eyes and told me she loved me. How do I know? That wasn't a lie, too. It wasn't a lie. You know it wasn't. He paused, lifting his chin in a gesture so like Lou, I nearly wept. You, you called her she, not it. God, it's so sweet. It's so sweet because finally, a man realizes that that he can't dehumanize a woman. He's been dehumanizing his wife this entire time, and now he now he realizes that she's an actual human and not an object. Oh my God, it, it's so great. <sighs> Everything is so on the nose in this book. Everything is so on the nose. It's so obvious, like, it's so obvious. Everything in this book is so obvious. It's so obvious. So anyway, Lou is taken to her coven with her mother who she hates. She wants her mother to die and all the witches to die too. Reed, Reed says, I'm not going after her. I'm not going after her. He ends up going after her, obviously. Coco joins him because she knows where he is. Madame LaBelle, a witch who is actually Reed's mother, goes with them too. Bo, who is the prince of the human king, goes with them, and Ansel goes with them. They trek across the forest of mysteries and everything. They run into these weird, 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 weird creatures. They they bump into a few witches, and Madame LaBelle disguises everyone in disguises so that the men are in, like, seen as chasseurs. So, basically, they get into... Uh, Lou's coven, basically. They get into the coven, and they try to break and they try to break Lou out, basically, of the coven. And they see Lou. Lou's like floating in the air, and she's passed out. She's unconscious. She's weak and everything. She's super skinny. She hasn't eaten in days. And they get to 
the coven on the night that she is supposed to die. At midnight, she's supposed to die. So Reed, Coco, and Ansel get her down, and a whole big explosion of like a, a of basically a battle goes down. The battle goes down, the final battle is here, and the final battle consists of the Archbishop um, telling Lou that he loves her, because Lou was like, do you hate me? And he said, no, 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 I don't hate you at all. I love you, you're my daughter, I don't hate you at all. And uh, Reed ends up killing the Archbishop because he betrayed Reed. He, 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 had an, he had an affair with the witch and he, and he had a child with, with a witch. So basically, if you betray someone, you have to die. So Reed kills the Archbishop, but not before realizing that he has magic. He's the first male witch. So now everyone's questioning, what if we were wrong about our sons? Do they all have magic too? But Reed's the first male witch, so he doesn't know. But everyone's just questioning now. Were we wrong about our sons? Do they all have magic too? So it's just like, does everyone have magic? Is everyone going to be a witch? Since Reed's the first male witch, are all males now witches? Hmm? I don't know. We'll find that out in the second book. In the second book, we'll find that out. Probably. Who knows? But um, in the end... Lou's mother, they try to kill Lou's mother. Lou's mother gets out of it. She's still alive. So they're gonna kill her by the end of this series, hopefully. And at the end of this book, they're all gonna go with Coco to her, what's it called? They're gonna go with Coco to her aunt's witch coven so that they can be safe and apparently Coco's aunt is like some big figure in their coven and she'll protect them all basically she's like a big deal she's like a very important figure in their coven basically so Coco's aunt will protect her and everyone else who comes into the coven with them and I assume we're still gonna go after Lou's mom because she has to die she has to die and that's basically it Lou and Reed they, they forgive each other, they say, oh my god, I love you so much, and now they can be together forever. The Archbishop's dead, Reed has magic, he's the first male witch, so now they're both witches, so, 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 yeah, that they can basically be, so, so, yeah, they can basically be together, so, so, yeah, so, yeah, they can basically be together without any, you know, like, issues, but who knows, maybe there will be issues in the second book, who knows, but overall, that's really all I have to say about Serpent and Dove. Um... Overall, the book was enjoyable, but it was just kind of average. I gave it three stars just because it was way too long. It could have been cut down to like 375, maybe 400 pages at least. It did not need to be over 500 pages. But overall, I enjoyed it. It was just average, so I didn't love it. So that's why I rated it three stars. So that's basically it, guys. Like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Uh, I make new videos every week. And I'll see you guys in my next video. All right. Bye, guys.